Hey guys, so this is the other uh, lecture associated with this week's um, writing assignment because you have two choices. Again, you can look at allied professions within the criminal justice system or you can take the perspective of the juvenile justice system. Um, and so this is a brief overview um, of the allied professionals within the criminal justice system. Um, so we're going to talk about law enforcement first, and then I'll move over to courts and then corrections. Um, should be a relatively short lecture. Uh, I just just want to talk about it briefly, just so you have an idea as to what the expectations are. Uh, so you're going to be looking at different roles here. And the first role here you have is um, the role of victim's rights advocate and counselors and psychologists and so forth. When you look at victim rights advocates, they, they serve many functions. Uh, they provide information on victimization. They provide information on crime prevention. They provide information on victim rights and protections. Uh, I think one of the important things that they do especially as they provide information on the criminal justice process, because a lot of people really aren't familiar with the criminal justice process and the different steps that takes place that they may, the victim may or may not be required to attend. So I think it's important that this is a critical component because um, most people are not intimate with the criminal justice system. And so if you're a victim of a crime, especially a violent crime, and then you have to go to court, uh, and testify and so forth, it can be a bit overwhelming. So uh, to me, you know, that, that serves an, an important role. Plus they also provide emotional support for people, right? Sometimes people just need to talk to somebody. A uh, detective may not be available. Uh, other folks might not be available. Uh, so it's good to have a victim's advocate on your side, somebody you can talk to and so sort of calm your nerves and walk you through some of the processes that's, that's going to take place. Next is the role of the goodwill ambassadors. And you can say, what the heck is that? Well, these are people that they help out by reaching the young and marginalized members of society, speaking out against drugs or gang affiliation. Now, my experience is like, if we're talking about um, people trying to develop an anti-gang program, for example. Uh, a lot of times I found that these are people that have a previous gang affiliation history, um, somehow was able to get themselves out of that life, and along the way acquired an education uh, that provided them with some skill sets necessary to become this goodwill ambassador. Uh, oftentimes I find uh, these goodwill ambassadors running programs. So typically gang affiliation or anti-gang programs might involve some level, for example, of boxing or karate or something that piques the interest of that age group that you think might be uh, more likely to be associated with gangs or at least be at that age where uh, gang members are seeking them uh, for uh, participation in the gang lifestyle. Uh, so you'll see the Goodwill Ambassadors, again, that they could be involved in drug programs, uh, gang programs. Uh, again, they're, they tend to be members of your community, and they want to work with you and try to develop programs to keep typically young and marginalized members of the communities out of trouble. Okay, so they can be a great resource. These are generally non-governmental organizations, could be uh, some level of community resource, but they are there. Okay. Uh, the role of the community service officer or aides, uh, I look at these as community service officers. Uh, these are your typical non-sworn personnel within a police department who do an array of things uh, in terms of community service. Um, in, in my organization, we, we call these police technicians, uh, and police technicians did an array of stuff for us. They responded to non-emergency calls, handled parking violations, um, non-injury traffic collisions, basic theft reports, things like that, okay? And so they served an important role within the organization because it allows police officers to develop more uh, time and resources to, to work on other uh, significant community problems.
All right. So the, the, the key here as you're writing this up, and, and you'll notice this on each one of these, is the idea of communication skills. And I, I, I can't underestimate the importance of communication within the criminal justice system. Uh, the criminal justice system is all about people. Uh, and so how we communicate and deal with people is a big part of our job. And, you know, I've always had the philosophy that I'd rather be able to talk somebody into going to jail than have to fight somebody to going to jail. So developing those communication skills, being empathetic, understanding people, um, explaining, taking the, you know, taking the, the minute or two to explain something to somebody uh, goes an awful long way. So throughout all of this, uh, these assignments, you're going to be addressing the communication skills needed, you know, whether it's writing, active listening, being empathetic, cultural awareness, all of these are really, really important. Right. Uh, as as our society becomes much more diverse, cultural awareness becomes even more important. Understanding cultures, uh, the, especially if you work in a very diverse community, trying to understand how the family dynamics uh, are, understanding the family dynamics, understanding the role of the parents within that environment and so forth. So these are going to be important things as, as you become criminal justice professionals. And so as you can see, each of these critical elements has a communication skills assessment associated with that. So you can uh, sit back and evaluate the importance of um, these assessments um, and, and, and especially in your communication skills. So next we move into courts. And in juvenile courts, they have what they call a guardian ad litem. And our textbook talks about that on page 399. Um, and in juvenile court, it's a, it's a little different. Well, you know, we have defense attorneys. And defense attorneys have a very secondary role in juvenile court due to the court's informality. So remember, juvenile court is not an adversarial system, as is adult court. It's very informal. It's something quite different. I mean, as a police officer going to juvenile court and testifying versus adult court was quite different. And so uh, defense attorneys, again, they have a secondary role. Many juveniles have no representation because juvenile prosecutors have heavy caseloads and tend to prosecute only the most serious cases. Uh, in some cases, the juvenile court judge appoints a guardian ad litem to represent youth and their best interests. Although most often an attorney, the guardian ad litem can be anyone who is concerned about the youth's best interest. So again, the guardian ad litem is to make sure that the youth's best interests are being followed. Uh, sometimes you'll see this in the uh, environment uh, with uh, juveniles who have been neglected or abused um, or whatever what we what we call you know those type of cases neglect um, those type of cases not necessarily uh, those that have been involved in criminal activity but guardian ad litem is also part of the formal process when we're talking about kids who have committed criminal offenses but it's basically something that makes sure the kids best interests are, are are being watched, okay? Even though they may have a, a lawyer that's part of the defense, his defense, um, the guardian ad litem is, plays an important role in ensuring that uh, their best interests are being taken care of during this whole particular process, okay? So you can research guardian ad litems as well, uh, but explain the relationship between the criminal justice system and this particular person. And again, guardian ad litem is tied to the juvenile justice system. So uh, again, page 399 uh, talks about that, but you can also Google it, research it. Uh, next, explain about court reporters, translators, stenographers, transcribers, those type of folks, how do they fit in? Uh, court reporters are typically gonna be found for your trial courts of general jurisdiction. In other words, those are your felony courts where they have to have a transcript, a record of what's happening. So you find those there. Translators are becoming even more important today as our society becomes more diverse. Uh, we have uh, stenographers, transcribers, an array of criminal justice professionals, allied professionals, whose job it is to help uh, courts 
get through uh, the array of cases and the documents that are needed uh, should cases end up being actually end up being appealed. The role of counselors and court psychologists, um, you know, court psychologists are becoming more and more important uh, as cases become more and more complicated, I suppose. Uh, you know, you have psychologists that are experts in an array of array of things. Um, addiction, for example, where, where uh, the courts has to determine whether or not uh, the appropriate punishment and maybe the level of addiction and uh, try to get some input from professionals in the field uh, as to the best course of action in terms of trying to mitigate future um, dealings with the court system if we can get this person um, you know off drugs that that would be an important uh, step so the courts are relying more and more on these type of positions um, uh, than ever before uh, a lot of times they're fairly common in civil courts especially family law where you're dealing with minors and maybe mom and dad getting a divorce and a array of things like that you know the family dynamics psychologists were always involved in that but we're beginning to see them play a more significant role um, in the criminal justice system uh, so you can research those uh, a lot of these you can research on the internet so it's not going to be too challenging uh, the idea of private prisons, uh, we've talked about that before, but that's described on page 318 to 320 of your textbook. So take a look at private prisons. And again, we're talking, we're going to be adding that component of communication skill. Mental health professionals are really, really uh, becoming a, a more and more important role in our criminal justice system. Uh, we have so many people in our jails and making their way through the criminal justice system who have mental health issues. So mental health professionals are beginning to play a huge role in guiding the courts and helping the courts deal with an array of legal matters involving those suffering from mental illness. Um, and it's, it's, it's part of that behavioral health services uh, that you are going to find our mental health professionals working for. And so their job is going to be critical in helping the courts, uh, trying to mitigate uh, the returning of individuals back into the court system. Uh, so it, it's going to be very, very important. Uh, there's a high prevalence of mental health problems among prison and jail inmates, as I just got done talking about. Um, some studies estimate that one in three state prisoners or one in six jail inmates receive treatment in custody. So uh, again, treatment is going to be important here and making sure that they receive the necessary treatment while they're in custody is going to be even critical. Um, according to the National Institute of Corrections, prison and jail inmates who have physical health, mental health and substance abuse conditions have a harder time reintegrating after release than those without. So mental health plays a huge role in corrections in, in trying to make sure that those who um, are in corrections get the mental health treatment that they need um, so that they don't reoffend and come back into the court system. Finally, the role of contractors such as food services, medical services within the criminal justice system. Um, you can take a look at that research that in your own that's really not too complicated uh, but uh, just know that these folks play an important role because not every position within local government or county government or state government is a is an employee of the state county or city a lot of times we contract for certain services so maybe we contract for medical services um, i know at law enforcement we do uh, and i'm sure corrections might be the same thing or we contract for food services all right. So again, what's needed to get that done, uh, maybe explain the role of these people. And then again, we get back to that communication skill. Why is that important in, in dealing with these types of folks? OK, uh, remember, as you're working on these assignments, um, that in order to earn credit for citations and attributions, you need to at least cite one source and um, uh, listed as a reference and a reference page so that I can evaluate 
your skill set in that area. Okay? I think that's it, guys. Thanks a lot, and I look forward to reading your work.